What a Wild Spirit Brings by Lil, Chapter 53 Lil sat up with a start from a dream of Mitten, begging her to come back and herself running away, because Mitten was always there at the edge of Shalom, kneeling and pleading for Lil to come back and help her to stop the darkness. Seeing Gimp and Black Seen suddenly, there with her felt strange and yet was a welcome relief. The wild one was touching her head and Gimp was holding her hand. She could feel it. She could feel her body. She could see them and hear them holding their breath while bugs buzzed around them. She could smell the nasty rot of the ongar. She was alive. She felt alive. Lil started crying from sheer joy. Light, Blaxian stated finally. I had to leave the dream and come back to get you. It is lucky for you I am considered a master dreamwalker, little brave one, or I would not have had enough skill to create that dragon in a dream so held by the dreamer's mind. I had to yank you out, which can cause madness, but I knew if I did not get you out, you could die. Gimp looked worried sick. Lil felt so ashamed, noticing her Heldani friend's red gem dangling over her forehead. Mitten was the same as Gimp always suffering, because they were friends with the not-so-well-named little brave one. Mitten was right. Lil wasn't brave at all. She started crying again. She couldn't stop the aching guilt. If only she could reach out and hug Mitten. If only she could somehow tell Mornay she was sorry and to please bring Mitten back. If only she could make up for all the wrongs she caused. Please, Lil, please tell me you are not insane, Gimp said, choking up, looking about to cry herself. Lil curled into Gimp's lap, weeping. She felt the Heldani hold her, and if she hadn't been crying so hard, would have told her friend not to, that she didn't deserve to be comforted. Lil cried for some time like that. Finally, she sat up, rubbing swollen eyes, and Blacksian knelt next to her, offering water from a flask. Gimp still had her arms around Lil as she guzzled water at dribbling around the corners of her lips as she drank. Lil splashed a little of it against her eyes and wiped them, feeling somewhat better. The two women with her were smiling, encouraging her with their tenderness, and she felt herself starting to settle. She still felt shamed and fearful, but at least not alone. With the warmth of Gimp's arms wrapping her up like a safety blanket, she dared to take in her surroundings. The three giants were all sitting in front of them, watching with curiosity as much as worry. Each one's beard trailed along the ground where they sat, and each one had his weapon lying on his lap. Beyond the Ongar were the mountains in the distance. Mountains shaped like sharp daggers splitting from the earth, thousands of them hurling their points into the sky as if to impale it. The peaks were not all tall, but all of them were slender and pointed. The wailing tongues. It was said that the wind swept through the tongues, making wailing sounds, and that this is how they got their name. Lil watched the mountains so different from the wide, craggy ones of Andres. These mountains could look like cut-out tongues, she guessed, but shivered. She preferred to stick to considering them to resemble daggers, like her original thought. Yes, little brave one, we are almost there, Blacksian said, after letting Lil stare at the wailing tongues for a few minutes. Then, Lil was offered some bread by Blacksian. She ate it in little bits, chewing slowly, savoring the ability to taste, to feel food in her mouth, to feel the tearing bread in her fingers. It was precious to be alive, she realized eating that bread. How do you feel? Gimp asked, again, worry undertoning her gentle smile. I, I feel. You feel? Yes. The Heldani looked concerned, casting her eyes to exchange a questioning look with Blaxian. The wild one studied Lil a moment and then abruptly struck her. The blow was hard enough that Lil tumbled from Gimp's grasp, knocking the wind out of her, and caused the last crust of bread to toss into the air. A blue heron swooped down and snatched the crust where it landed on the ground. Lil's vision had spots of light, and as she shook her head trying to sit up, she heard Gimp yelling, Blaxian! What is wrong with you? She is obviously only just recovering from whatever ordeal you led her into. You! You were her teacher, and you let things get out of hand, and you now you hit her! I will not allow it! I warned her when we first started she would be struck if she did something wrong. She is an Entha. You have no say in how she is trained. Gimp suddenly had fire spouting from both hands, wind kicking up and swirling about her, causing her cloak and hair to flail upward. Blacksian took a step back, but still kept a firm face. Gimp started lifting her hands as if to throw the fire. No! Lil shouted, hand on her head. Gimp's hands remained half poised to throw, and then, as quickly as it begun, the wind died down. The fires winked out, and the only thing that indicated 
What had almost just happened was Gib's hair all tussled, and a red and yellow glowing rune gently winding their way back down the length of their chains to the Heldani's belt. Lil sighed with relief. Blaxian still stood her ground. Humans are such emotional creatures, Andal rumbled. Yes, very, Ferg concurred. Listen, all of you, Lil said, slowly rising to her feet despite her dizziness. No more! No more fighting each other! No more! Gimp opened her mouth and then shut it, at the strength of Lil's expression. Blaxian was eyeing her student with interest. Lil straightened her back and held her head high. We are all friends. Let's start acting like it. I was getting overconfident. Black Sean did warn me, and instead of remembering what you had told me, Gimp, about my own cousin, I was thinking about if I could make people in the wilder in the same fashion as I make other things. I deserved that blow. If I had been wiser, Black Sean would not have had to endanger herself to try to rescue me. Gimp looked surprised, and Blaxian started saying that one could not make people or any living things in the Wilder, that they would have no souls. But Lil kept on. I am responsible for my actions. It is my life. I am alive. Me. I. My life. My thoughts. My fault. My guilt. It is all mine. Guilt. Now that is too much, Lil. You made a mistake. You are no criminal. I have told you that, Gimp started. But again, Lil cut off the other speaking. I ruined Mitten's life, didn't I? I keep causing trouble for you and Blaxian. I always ruin everything. I am a blight on the face of the earth because I have been so damned self-centered. Don't you understand? Don't you see? The only reason I think of everyone all the time is because I want them to think of me. Because I want. Because I need. Because everything is really about me. No more. No more fighting. No more crying. No more acting like a fool and disregarding people just because I'm damned stubborn. No more. The younger and the women stared at Lil. She stood, seeming taller than her height, eyes grim and flaring with anger and strength. Her fists were clenched at her sides, even her breath yet heavy, but not a tantrum. It was not a fit. It was a moment, a moment that held everyone like a clamp.